Just continue to keep praying for us. I just lost my nephew over COVID over about yesterday. I just lost him yesterday. So y'all yeah, just continue to keep praying for the family. Um, the family is Scott and Armstrong. Just lift them up in prayer. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. Somebody clap your hands and give God some this house. Ah, uh, that's kind of weak right there. Yeah. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. The angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty, what a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before Him. Angels bow before Him. Heaven and earth adore Him. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels, angels bow before Him. Heaven and earth adore Him.
Jesus' name. Oh, said, I'm so glad I'm here in Jesus' name. How many glad to be in the house this morning? Give the Lord a hallelujah. Give the Lord a thank you, Jesus. So glad. So glad he woke me up this morning. So glad he started me on my way. So glad he's given me the activity of my limbs. So glad the blood is running warm in my veins. So glad. So glad I'm here in Jesus' name. As we bow our heads before the Lord in prayer. Grace, Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we come before you as humble as we know how. Lord, just thank you for another opportunity. Just to say yes, Lord. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. Not my way, Lord. But your will be done. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask you to touch every heart in this place. Lord God, touch the minds of those that, that are going through sickness and pain. For you are a healer. You are a way maker. Oh, hallelujah. You are a burden bearer in the time of trouble. Lord, remember those in the hospital. Remember those in the mental institution. Remember those incarcerated. Oh, we so glad to be here in Jesus' name. We so glad to be here in Jesus' name. Oh, a million didn't make it, but I'm one of the ones who did. And for that purpose, Lord, I'm going to lift my hands up and just say hallelujah. I'm going to say thank you, Jesus, because you've been good. It wasn't according to my will. It wasn't according to the doctor's will. It wasn't according to the lawyer's will. It wasn't according to anybody's will, but according to your will. Oh, hallelujah. I'm coming in this place to give your name, your name the praise. For at that name, every knee must bow. At that name, every tongue must confess. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. That Jesus is Lord. Father, bless. Keep us and we both careful to praise your name. Bless the far gone service. Lord God, the singers, Lord, the musicians. Lord God, those that are giving the word of God on today. Touch somebody's heart. Help it to penetrate their heart. That they may come to the altar saying, what must I do to be saved? In the mighty name of Jesus. And let the church say amen. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It's a blessing to me here this morning. Thank the goodness of the Lord that we are here today. Thank you, Jesus. I swear that really going to be taking 100 songs, 100 songs. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all you lands. Bless the Lord with goodness, with gladness. Come before his presence when singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. He is that have made us and know we ourselves. We are his people and we are his sheep or his pastor. Enter into the gate with thanksgiving and to his courts we praise. Be thankful unto him. 
Thank you, Jesus. And bless his name. For the Lord, he is good. He is good all the time. He's good. And his mercy is everlasting. Hallelujah. He's true and do it to all generations. May God bless to us. So read on his word. Jesus' name. Let's give them a nice, Greater Refuge Temple. We thank God so much that you chose Greater Refuge Temple as your place of worship today. And we pray that God would give you a blessing for being here. Uh, the only announcements we have today are the birthdays. December 20th.
house. What you think she would say at this time? Oh, come on. You can do better than that. It's offering time. Time to give unto the Lord. How many of y'all are, are cheerful givers in the house? How many of you do it in a cheerful way? There's something about giving. I know that you can give up your substance, but God is also looking if you're giving from your heart. How many people know how to give from your heart? Let's give him a praise offering. Let's give him, Lord, I thank you. Come on, give it from your heart. Hallelujah. I know sometimes you come into church and you're looking to see who's next to you and what they have on. But you came to give the Lord some praise, right? Come on, give him a love offering. Lord, I thank you. Hallelujah. You're waking us up this morning. Giving us an opportunity to praise him one more time. I was praying this morning. I was just thanking God for his grace and mercy. Because he could have taken me out, but something about God's love. Can you testify of his love? And others count you out, God will wrap his arms around you and whisper in your ear and say, they better not touch you. <laughs> I think that's the anointing. You think you have an offering, I want you to put it in your right hand and hold it up. Don't you take that offering because God loves you with a special type of love. Not because what you can give. Not because how faithful you've been. But because he's been faithful to you. Kept you alive. Giving you an opportunity to say hallelujah this morning. Some folk didn't wake up this morning. And they can't even say hallelujah. But you are amongst the land of the living. Hiya, Lord, I praise you. Waking me up this morning. Giving me an opportunity to say thank you. Take that offering and I want you to stand. And as we pray for this offering, I want you to ask God for something. Sometimes you get in formality. This is just offering. I'm just going to give. I want you to think about somebody uh, that is going through. And I want you, as you hold this offering, hallelujah. I want you to think about somebody that needs help. Think about somebody that needs deliverance. As you give your offering, I want you to whisper that name, hallelujah. Under your breath, because the Bible say the Lord inhabits the praises of his people. You ain't even got to talk loud. You can whisper under your breath. Lord, I thank you. God is able to come right down your aisle, right down your pew, and answer your prayer right where you stand. Thank you, Jesus, for your people, Lord. I thank you. We're gathered together here in your name, Jesus. We want to tell you thank you because you've been good to us. Kept us alive. Gave us an opportunity to praise you. Gave us an opportunity to give unto you. Bless this house. Bless your people. Give them their heart's desire. Bless this offering for your perfect work. And let the church say in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Ushers will come and the choir will give us a song.
Give him a praise, every praise, not some praises, not a few praises, but every praise. Why don't you ask your neighbor, say, did you bring a praise? They didn't say nothing, did they? They just looked at you all funny. Ask somebody else on the other side, did you bring a praise? Well, give it to him then. If you brought one, give it to him. Take it back to the house. Hallelujah. The Bible said, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. When the crow got up, he started talking. When the bird decided to sing, he started talking. When the oceans got up, it started to roar. The trees start swaying. And what did you get up and do? Did you tell him thank you? Did you tell him hallelujah? Did you tell him how much you love him? Amen. Hallelujah. Anybody love the Lord? I said anybody. I'm feeling Deacon McGee again. Anybody here? Love my Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. No service is complete without a word from the Lord. Today I believe that the Lord is going to talk to us, say something to us. If you got a pen and a, and a piece of paper, I want you to write some scriptures down that we're going to give to you today. We honor God. We honor our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We honor our pastor in his absence, Sheriff Jeff and his companion. They are dealing with some sickness, but they'll be here real soon. We honor Lady Brown as she's dealing with some sickness also. She can't hardly talk for right now, but she sends her blessings. I honor and thank God for the men of God that are sitting up here on this rostrum this morning and those that are in the audience who didn't sit back but saw a need and came to work. Honor this great choir. They sound good, don't they? Come on, give God a praise. Thank God for our musicians. Thank God for our mothers, missionaries, and women of God and men of God and children of God and our visitors and everybody in their respective place. Give yourself a hand in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to ask you to turn your Bible to Acts the second chapter and I'm going to have a ceremony uh, some onyx solo before I get started. Sister Reddick will, Rashawn will give us a selection. But I want you to go ahead and get your Bibles ready. All right, all right. Acts, the second chapter, uh, verse number 41, 1 Corinthians, first chapter 10. I'm going to give you some other scriptures. So get you something to write with because this is going to be your Bible study for the week. Amen. God bless you. The safest place in the whole wide world is in the will of God. Though trials be great, and the way seems hard. 
Father God, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, I make my humble appearance before your divine throne. I have no people. I have nothing but you. This house, those that dwell therein today, they belong to you. Everything about them is yours. You have begotten them. Father, we come to feed, to give such as you have given unto us. Break yokes, Lord. 
make the devil move. Cause healing to come. Deliverance, Lord God. Bind up the broken heart. Set at liberty those that are taken captive. Have your way through your word. Let every hindrance, everything that will block our ears, let it be moved right now in the name of Jesus. I bless you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I glorify you. Hallelujah. Help us, Lord, as we move forward, Lord. We need the victory. We must have it, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Need strength, Lord. We, we need to know the way. Help us, Lord God. So much is going on among us and around us. Thousands are falling at our side and 10,000 at our right hand, but we're still here, Lord. And as long as we're here, we come to give you praise. We're going to open up our mouths, Lord God. And glorify you and magnify you. With the... Bless us now, Lord. Bless your word. Bless your people. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I want you to move quickly from Acts the second. We're going to come back there. Go to St. John, the 17th chapter. It is an unusual day. And what I'm ministering today, I won't say that it's unusual, but very much necessary. St. John, the 17th chapter, 20th verse. And if you don't have your Bible, write it down, write it down. Jesus says there, neither pray I for these alone, but for them which shall believe on me through their word. That they all may be one. That they all may be one. As thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me, and the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are. Thank you, Jesus. And I in them and thou in me that they may be made perfect in one. And that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Acts, the second chapter. And the 41st verse, don't get mad at me, preacher, that's too much reading. Just go a little further, walk a little bit with me. Acts, uh, second chapter, 41st verse. Then they glad to receive his word, were baptized, and the same day was added unto them 3,000 souls. 42nd, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, fellowship, breaking of bread, and prayer. Continues to read, and fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things come. They sold their possessions and good and parted them to all men and to every man had need as every man had need. They continued daily with one accord 
in the temple, breaking bread from house to house, and did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God, having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily as should be saved. My last scripture, but I'm going to give you some more, but the last one that I'm going to read out to you. It's going to be 1 Corinthians, the first chapter. And the 10th verse. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing. That there be no divisions. That there be no divisions among you. Could be other folk, but not among you. But that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. For it has been declared unto me of you, my brethren, by them which is of the house of Chloe, Chloe's house is talking too much, that there are contentions among you. Now this I say that every one of you said, I am of Paul, and I am of Apollos, and I am Cephas, and I am of Christ. That's the, the question. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? And or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I, I want to talk today about the destruction of division. The destruction of division. The devil is a cunning, cruel enemy of all of us. He loves everything that starts with his first name, devil. He loves every D. Destruction, division, anything that will cause folk to miss out on God. He loves it. He works to try to mess up what God is trying to put together. He gets in us. He gets in our lives. He causes us to do things and say things. I wish I could say that I was perfect and I've talked like this before and I continue to talk like this because I understand that God is still working on me and working on us. I understand that God has a purpose and God wants certain things to be done. He wants people to see him and to know him and to know who he is and know how he operates. He always operates in love. He operates in oneness. When we talk about holiness, we have to talk about oneness. Jesus makes the prayer uh, before he gets ready to leave. He talks about the father to the father and he says that I want us to have I want to have the same glory that I had with you from the beginning. Because I had to come down and separate myself and take on this sinful flesh. And not only did I have to take on this sinful flesh, but I had to take on the sins of the world. And it was so ugly and so nasty. They put me on a cross. And when they put me on the cross, you couldn't even look at me. So darkness fell just so you didn't look at me. 
And when darkness fell, I cried out, Laba, Saba. Why hast thou? Yeah, I lost my Hebrew there just a minute. <laughs> but I felt forsaken. I knew what it was like to be separated. But now I want us to get back the glory. I want to have back the glory. I, I, I want us to be one. And not only do I want us to be one, but everybody who comes in this way. I'm praying for them. That they will come into this oneness. That's what we used to call holiness. We used to call it oneness. Because we had all things common. We, we sometimes don't understand the power of being together in God. We, we don't understand that. We live in a divided world. And we live in sometimes a divided religion. We got division all up in our soul, in our beings, and it, it's just something that, uh, that gives the devil opportunity to work. He, he works in division, and, and division comes so sneakily. It, 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 it creeps on. We don't even sometimes understand that we are operating under a spirit of That's how slick the devil is because sometimes we, we have a reason to be divisive. We have, we, have a, we have a reason. We have a justified reason. And sometimes that justified reason is it's because the person I'm dealing with is no good. Sometimes we have a reason because it doesn't take much to find fault in some other people. I'm preaching hard now. It doesn't take much because all you have to do is check your list and don't tell me you don't have a list. Because it is some church folk, can I just be real in the house here? I know some folk that, that are saved, sanctified, and it is a mess. Irk something way over here. Walk around, every time they get close, it start hurting right here. Because it's always something going on with them. It's always a stuff all the way around them. And it would be better to divide myself than get in that stuff with them. But that's a division. We, 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 some folks, we just praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Love you. Love you too. And I'm done with you. Yeah, right. Because you're messing up my salvation. Make me want to do something to you sometime. Make me want to say something sometime. Instead of saying something, I'd rather be away from you. But the word of God says, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples. Because you have love. God, I praise you. It didn't say whether you are a mess or not. It said because you have love. One for another. How can I love you and you're getting on my nerve? How can I love you and you're about to make me backslide? How can I love you and you are making me want to do something? I ain't done it in a long time. Because sometimes you got to understand that God is love. And he said, as I have loved you with your messed up self. God, I wish I could preach. I wish I knew how to preach. As I have loved you, you ought to love one another. 
Because when you don't love, you let the devil creep in. We don't sometimes understand the power of being together. We don't understand the power of being unified. Because when we are together and we are with God and when we are with God, nothing shall be impossible. Healing shall happen. Deliverance shall happen. The devil got to flee. Folks going to get saved. People going to get delivered. When we're together, you can't just walk in here. Devil can't just come in here and do nothing. When we're together, we'll put the blood on him together. We'll drive him out. But we can't be one as long as we in ourselves. We can't be one. As long as we in our cell. But I'm just going to be honest with you. Certain folk, we can't do nothing. We can't even how to walk together. And the Bible said, how can two walk together? Except they agree. We can't even agree about Christ. That's what's wrong with the Christian world. We don't know how to baptize. Well, do we should be this. They say this. They say this. They say that. They say that. We say that. So we're going to start something over here. Start something over there. Start something over there. And so now the devil just get in the country and do what he want to do because the people of Christ can't come together and call on the name of the Lord and cast them out and do what needs to be done. I wish I had about 10 people who want to drive the devil out. He said, we're going to walk together for the Christ's sake. We're going to walk together for Jesus' sake. We're going to walk together. The whole thing messed up. It's all divided. And we have justification for that. I'm justified hating you. If you hate me, you don't like me, I don't like you either. That's justification. I should be able to do that. But once I came into Christ, I gave up myself. I gave up my mess. I gave up my life. I become a new creature. I'm supposed to walk in love. I'm supposed to live in love. I'm supposed to pray in love. I'm supposed to be love. Because that's what he called you. Be love. Be love. You are the children of God. And it does not yet appear what you shall be. But when he shall appear, you shall see him as he is. For you shall be just like him. I'm going to be just like him. I'm going to be just like him. I'm going to be just like him. The vision is running the house. It's running the church. It's running the country. Hallelujah. But somebody's got to stand up and be on the Lord's side. Somebody's going to have to say it. You can't make me hate you. You can't make me dislike you. I'm going to love you. Just like he loved me. I'm going to forgive you. Because some of you can't get free. Because you're still holding on to stuff that don't happen too long ago. And you're still bringing it with you. And you can't understand why you can't get no joy. You got to let that stuff go. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. 
Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are new. Why don't you walk in the newness? Oh God, I praise you. I, I got some praises in the house. Somebody give him some praise. Somebody give him some glory. The vision is ruling the family. It's everywhere. Tearing up the marriage. Tearing up the relationships. Tearing up the house. Can't get peace on the job. Can't find peace nowhere. But I come to tell you that God's got peace everywhere. It's in your love. It's in your forgiveness. It's in your, in your ability to stand up and let the people know I serve a mighty God, a forgiving God. And as he has forgiven me, It gets the work because it gets people to carry it. It gets folks to carry it. You carry the vision. I'm going to tell on myself just a little bit here. Some, Sometimes you, you got to be careful with foolish gestures. Because folks say stuff they really mean on the joke. <laughs> But the Bible says you're going to have to give account for every idle word. Messing with my sister yesterday, we playing around. The, the, the day before yesterday, playing around, she helped me do stuff. And so I decided I wanted to bless her and gave her a little something. And she was like, oh, there you go. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And before I know it, I would have went back to my old little thing. I said, nigga, please. <laughs> And when I said it, I felt I felt something. I said, Ooh. Holy Ghost didn't have to say nothing to conscience. Because sometimes it's your conscience don't condemn you. Hallelujah. God said, Your conscience should have caught you on that one. Holy Ghost shouldn't have to catch you on that. Your conscience should have. So I knew how to preach to people. So I took my happy self to bed. Woke up. Say, wow. Now, you know. I, don't, I almost call my own self, nigga, you know you shouldn't have said that. <laughs> you knew you shouldn't have said that. You are the man of God. You are a saint of God. You have the spirit of God on the inside of you. And the seed that you laid was a nigga. You could have said anything to bless her. You could have said anything that could have came out of your mouth and been a positive seed to encourage her. You don't understand what's in you. Love is in you. Forgiveness is in you. Mercy is in you. If God be in you. If he's in you, he ought to come out of you. I couldn't wait for the daybreak. Couldn't wait for it this morning. I rushed over there because the Lord let me know. Yeah, I had to get it right. I don't know no niggas. There's no niggas I know in the church. There's no niggas in my community. There's no niggas in my family. There's no niggas anywhere. I haven't seen any niggas. I seen some blessed people. I seen some people God trying to save. I seen some people God trying to deliver. I seen some folks that need a miracle. I seen some people that need healing. I need some seen some people that need joy. I seen some people that need peace. I seen some people that need Jesus, but I ain't seen no nigga. Ask your neighbor, what do you see when you see other folks? What do you see? I see somebody need a miracle. I see somebody need to be saved. I see somebody that's messed up, but I know a God who can fix that. What do you see when you see an enemy? What do you see 
when people get on your nerve. What do you see? Tell him hallelujah just a little bit. Just, 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 just to make me feel good. Tell him thank you, Jesus. That's why nobody can't get delivered. Can't, I don't, I, woo. God bless them, man. They going to hell. Oh, God bless them, man. They ain't no good. God bless them. They ain't going to never be nothing. I'm so glad that instead of saying that, somebody prayed for me. Yeah. Had me on. Oh, God, I wish I Somebody opened their mouth and said, Lord, save them. Lord, deliver them. Lord, bring them out. Is there anybody believe that God is able? Hey, I wish I had five people. Is there five people over here that believe God can save your children, save your daughter, save your son, save your ex, save your enemy? Is there anybody over here that believe that God is still able? How about over here? Well, if you believe it, say so. It's a, it's a, it's a spirit of division. God brought it right in your face. But he said, I'm not going to give you one pastor. Give you two. And when I give you two, I'm a revealing you. What you got? I brought you this way to humble you, to prove you, to see what was in your heart. So when you get two, then the folk start saying. It ain't going to work. It's going to be division. Wait and see. And the folks start talking on the outside. But we don't care what folks are saying on the outside. We, we, we trying to get the folk who believe that God is able to say that God is doing something. God is working on something. God is able. There's a division. I pray that there be no division. What's causing your division? Because I want you to understand nothing about God is divided. That's only one Lord. Can I let me let me let me get that? Ephesians. Ephesians. Watch, I'm going to Ephesians, the fourth chapter, y'all. Can I can I do it like I feel it? Y'all all right with me? The only division is in the devil. And when you find yourself under a spirit of division, don't worry about it. We're not going to get mad at you. Because <clears throat> we love you. Will you just tap three people and say, we love you. We, we, we love you. Do you love me? It don't matter. It don't matter. It don't matter. I said, do you love It don't matter. I said, do you? It don't matter. I said, do you? It don't matter. Yeah. It don't matter what you do. It matters what I do. Yeah. Just tell somebody, that's what your preacher preach. That's, that's what your pastor preach. It matters what you do. Ephesians 4, and, and verse, verse, we're going to start at verse 1. Therefore, I therefore the prisoner of the Lord. Now, 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 first of all, you got to understand, he calls himself, Mother Cassia, he calls himself a prisoner. And, and when you're a prisoner, see, some of y'all have never been to jail, but I've got an 894 phone. That, that's my DC number. And, and they give you that number, you have that number for the rest of your life, and then if you come back, they just add an A. And a B and a C. And by the time you get to a D, that means you're good there for good. Thank you. 
He said, I am a prisoner. That means I'm locked in. Because I'm locked in, I don't do like I want to do. I go where he tell me to go. I do what he tell me to do. I love who he tells me to love. I forgive who he tells me to forgive. My life is not my own. I've been bought with a price. Not with corruptible things like silver and gold, but with the precious blood. He said, I'm a prisoner. I beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation, and that's the work where you've been called with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing. Just look at somebody real funny. So you got to put up with me if you want to make it. <laughs> You can't make it without me. You're going to have to put up with me. Get mad all you want to. You got to put up with me. I got the same God you got. You got to put up with me. I got the same spirit. You got to put up with me. For bearing one another. In love, and endeavoring to keep the unity yeah. of the spirit. Let's just be honest. Yeah. If I can catch you in the spirit, we're going to have a good day. Yeah. <laughs> but I can't catch you in the spirit all the time. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> Sister, and if I can preach right, sometimes we're not going to catch each other in the spirit. Sometimes we're going to catch you on the wrong. And I'm not the only one to have a bad day. You got a bad day. You got a bad day. You got, you. you. Why y'all ain't helping me here? And the bond of peace. Follow peace. With all men. No man can see the Lord. There is one body and one spirit. And you are called into one hope of your calling. So let, let me explain because we do need to explain sometimes because sometimes we go over. When you think about the body of Christ is not buildings. It's not organizations. It's not different ministries, things like that, because we call everything the body of Christ. It is. It does not come with observation. It's a spiritual thing. It is so spiritual that Christ is the head of the body. And the head has already went to heaven and is sitting on the right hand of God, making intercessions for the body, getting the body ready. And there's going to come a time when the head is going to call the body and the body is going to join up with the head and they will be forever with the Lord. And so it's a spiritual thing. you got to have yourself ready because what will happen is some of us will mess around and be caught up. Some of us will mess around and be left here. And so you want to have your mind right, have your stuff right, get yourself right, so when you hear the voice, you can go ahead and get up. It's a spiritual body, so there's one body. I can teach a little while, can I? And he says, fear first, there's one Lord. One faith. One baptism. One God. Father of all, who's above all, through all, and in you all. But unto every one of you is given grace. Now, now, if you really was to break that word grace down, grace is something that's greater stooping down. 
can lift something up. Something that is greater stooping down to lift something up. It's by grace that you say and not of yourself, not of works, lest any man shall boast. But it is the gift of God. Anybody glad for grace? I'm so glad that he reached way down. Every one of us, y'all, 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 see, y'all, y'all miss words sometimes. Every one of us, the alcoholic, every one of us, the dope dealer, every one of us, the crazy man, every one of us, the white man, every one of us, the black man, every one of us. That's why I'm so glad. Lord gave me enough sense to not let folk write me off. That boy there, they didn't say that. They used that other word that I don't use no more. Uh -uh. He ain't going to never be nothing. But God, stoop down. Yeah. I wish I had something. Like Is there anybody he reached down and got you? Is there anybody he picked up in here? Is there anybody got a praise for him? Is there anybody happy about it? Is there anybody would magnify him? I, I better stop. I'm about to weary y'all. I don't want to weary you. According to the measure of the gift of Christ. And then he gave gifts, but I want you to go to the 11th verse. Watch this. And he gave some apostles. And he gave some prophets. And he gave some evangelists. And he gave some pastors and teach teachers. He gave them for them to be celebrities. He gave them for you to treat them like gods. He, he gave them because they were better than you. He, he gave them for you to when you see them. No, I gave them for you. For the maturing of the saints. For the work of ministry. And ministry, the, the thing that you can't do ministry if you have not done. And, and it can't be no play play love. Can't be no sexual love. That erotic love. Can't just be that, that Philly love. That, that brotherly love. Can't be that surface thing that, you know, Teddy, it, it sounded good back in the day. And I'm sorry, I'm a 60 baby, y'all. And sometimes I have to bring it up because Teddy said, it's so good. Loving somebody. Yeah. When somebody loves you back. It can't be that kind of love. It's got to be the love that if you don't love me, if you don't like me, if you can't stand me, you can't stop me from loving you. God, I wish I had some help in the house. Here, Holly. Because God says, while you were yet sinners, while you were at the club with your high heels on, while you were doing your thing with your gin and juice, 
while you were going from this house and that bed and that. I'm talking grown folk now. I'm talking grown folk. I died for you. I left the door open for you. That when you come to yourself and when nothing else could help, you know that the door is wide open for you. I left it open. Till we all, 13th verse. Hey, God, I got to be preaching that right there. Till we all. That's all of us. That's the folk who haven't made it yet. That's the folk who's just coming in. That's the folks who don't even know they're supposed to be in. Till we all come. Till we all come. There's some folk we got to get. They got to come. To the unity of the faith. And the knowledge of the Son of God and to a perfect man and to the measures of statutes of the fullness of Christ. That we be henceforth no more children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind and doctrine by the slay of men, cunningness of craftiness, whereby they lay in wait to deceive. I've come too far to yeah. let somebody fool me. Yeah. I taste that the Lord is good. Anybody taste it? Anybody taste the Holy Ghost? Anybody taste the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living? If you have an old taste and see that the Lord is good. We find ourselves now in the book of Corinthians and I'm about to come to a close. And we find that the Corinthian church is a church full of people and their personalities. Our personality, it's in us. To be divisive. We get in arguments about who's going to win a football game. We, we get in arguments about other folks. Stuff. Watch and see. I, I, I'm, I'm telling you, Jeff going to get it, man. Jeff going to, you know, I'm going for Jeff. I'm going for Elder Brown. I'm going for Homer. What that got to do with your soul? Division over nothing. <laughs> Sister Brown and I was about to divorce. We first got married over potato salad. <laughs> I like my potato salad warm. I like it. I don't like it real cold. I like it kind of warm. So I leave the potato salad out. Sister Brown said her daddy said. He ain't live with us, but he said. If you leave mayonnaise out, it'll go bad. So you have to put it in the refrigerator. So I put it in the refrigerator. She take it out. I, I uh, put it on the counter. She put it in the refrigerator. So we had a discussion. Can I tell you something? It's okay to have a disagreement, but don't let it become division. All right. We going to disagree, but don't let it divide us. Just because I don't agree with you, don't let it divide us. Some of us are not even talk to family members over a barbecue sandwich. She knew that was my barbecue sandwich. I put it in that little four and set it on the table. She said, oh, little nappy head boy to go get it. We bring that foolishness into the house of God. Yeah. Not understanding there's a demon that must be defeated. There's a devil that has to go. And God has given us the power. As long as we're together, we can move some stuff. So we had to come to an agreement. What I'm going to eat, I'm going to put outside. I'm going to leave it there, and don't you bother. And what's for everybody else is in the refrigerator. We have to come to agreement. And that thing that we must agree on is Christ. He is the center of our joy. He is our hope. 
He is our way maker. He is our everything. If you didn't come in here to do anything else, come on in here to praise him. Let's praise the Lord. While we're in here, let's drive some demons out. If we get together and magnify him, if we get together and praise him, if we come in with one mind on one accord, he's got to go. But he brought you in here with that day stuff. But what they going to play? I don't like that they sung that song. Who gonna preach? I'm trying to tell you, if we come in here and come together and, and come in at the door, so let's go in here and praise him. Let's go in here and magnify him. Let's go in here and glorify him. Uh, let's go in here and turn this out. Uh, let's take the roof off this place. Uh, let's glorify God. Uh, is there anybody in the house that would praise him with me and magnify him with me and lift him up? Lift my Savior up. We can argue when we get outside, but when we come in here, Let's lift him up. Let's glorify him. Let's make this a holy place. Come on, just a little while. Come on, you might not have one. But give him the sacrifice of praise. Oh, magnify the Lord with me here. Let us exalt his name. If we ever get on one accord, your son gonna speak in tongues. If we ever get in one accord, your daughter's gonna be loose. If we ever get on one accord, healing's gonna happen in the pews, uh, if we ever get on one accord. Yeah. Yeah. One scripture, one scripture. One scripture, I'm going to close out. I wish I could. I wish I could be innocent. I wish I could be innocent, y'all. I, I wish I could say that I don't carry any division in my bag. He's so cunning. Just talking to one of the elders yesterday. And I was, I saw it in the Bible, though, because Paul had gotten to a point where he was so tired of John Mark. Because every time they would go to places and the stuff get hot, John Mark would say, I'm going to leave. And he would leave. And so they got ready to go to this certain region. And John Mark said, one of the other disciples say, let's bring John Mark. He said, no, don't bring him. And they got in so much of a, of a disagreement that they divided. And they went different ways. But we find Paul later as he got a little bit more mature. He sent for John Mark and said, bring him because he's profitable for the ministry. What, what are you trying to say, Brian? I'm trying to say everybody's important. Every praise is important. Every hand clap is important. Every mind stayed on Jesus is important. You are important. you hear your name, but just tell them you are important. I need you to survive. I'm not going to harm you with words from my lips. I need you. I'm closing on 1 John. The first chapter and the fifth verse. I'm closing. Thank you for letting me Minister like the Lord, give it to me. Amen. 
We all got a part. I remember Pastor Ross. I used to get mad. Brother Lomano came over to the house and barred all my tools. And didn't get none of my tools back. Had a whole shed full of tools. He said, Bishop told me to come over and get your fish cooker. I said, tell Bishop you need to bring the rest of the stuff back. <laughs> he went and told Bishop, and he come back with a smile on his face. I know he went up no good. <laughs> Bishop said, come here. By the time I got over there, okay, well, I'm, I, I'm justifying this. This man had taken all my tools. I don't even see the tools around the church. Where the tools at? <laughs> Bishop say, don't let the devil use you. <laughs> I couldn't figure that thing out. I was young then. How's the devil using me and this man don't stole all my stuff? How the devil using me? But the devil will definitely use you to maintain a division. You holding on to stuff that happened so long ago. What about now? We're not living 10 years ago. We're not living 20 years ago. We're living right now. Here it is. Verse 5. This then is the message that we've heard of him and declare to you that God is light. In other words, God is illuminating. There's nothing hidden by God. Everything you see, God does it in the open. I don't have to do anything in the closet. I don't have to do nothing behind the corner. I don't have to get on the sidewalk and talk about nobody. I don't have to do nothing. I'm God. I say what I mean, and I mean what I say. Hallelujah. I'm God. I'm wide in the wide open. If you got an issue, you got a problem, come talk to me. I'm God. Hallelujah. You got to be careful when you got to go around the corner. You're having your little conversation, you got to look, see who coming. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> and in him is no darkness at all. Now, if we say we have fellowship, see, I didn't get the minister on the fellowship and on the four tires to the apostolic doctrine. That's the doctrine. That is the fellowship, it is the breaking of bread, and it's the prayers. Those are things that we have to do together, but I didn't get to teach them in there. We'll do that at another time. But he says we have fellowship with, if we say we have fellowship with God, and we do stuff in darkness, we lie, and we're doing not the truth. But watch the seventh verse. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship. If I walk in the light as he is in the light, don't I have fellowship? He said, no, we have fellowship one with another. We can't have true fellowship unless you in the light and I'm in the light. We got to be in the light to have fellowship because fellowship in darkness don't mean nothing. So we got to get in the spirit sometime. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son. Just, 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 I'll just do this for me. If you get in the light and I get in the light, we're going to get clean. 
if, if you get in the light, brother, and I'm in the light, we're going to get clean. Yeah. If we can all get in the light yeah. with God, yeah. the blood going to come in. Yeah. And it's going to clean everything. Yeah. We got to get in the light. Can't do this dark stuff. The vision is in the dark. But we got to come out of the darkness into the marvelous light. If you want to be clean. Anybody want to be clean? I don't hear anybody saying nothing. I'm... Now here's for the religious folks. If we say that we have no sin. You're fooling yourself. And the truth is not in you. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I got to tell the truth. You can laugh at me. You can talk about me. You can talk about how crazy I am, but I feel clean. I feel washed. I feel good. I feel new. Tenth verse, if we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar. And his word is not in us. The vision is from the devil. We got to get that joker out. Right now, I wish I had about at least 10 people with me that will stand and rebuke the vision in the name of Jesus and command it by the power of the Holy Ghost to loose this house and to loose us and to loose our lives. Anybody want to rebuke it? Anybody want to call it out? Anybody want to confess it? Anybody want to do something with it but besides take it home? Come on, just say it in the name of Jesus. Come on, just say it in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. If you got some boldness, just call Jesus a couple times. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus. Come on, help me call him. Come on, help me call him. Jesus. Come on, he's going to wash us. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Come on, call him with me. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. I, I, I'm so serious. I'm so serious. I, I know we got an issue. And I definitely don't want you to go home with it. If two would get together and agree on uh, touching on anything, the Lord say he'll do it for us. I, I wish you could couple with somebody and cast it out. I wish you could couple with somebody and say, will you agree with me right now? Let's get together and pray. Let's get together and cast this thing out. And then tell it in the name of Jesus. Loose us. In the name of Jesus, get away from us. In the name of Jesus, go back to the pit of hell. In the name of Jesus, get out. Come on, take some authority. Come on, you okay? Cast it out. Jesus, cut it out. Cut up our soul. In the name of Jesus. Come on, hallelujah. Come on, give God some praise for him leaving. Give God some praise for your cleansing. Give God some praise for your washing. Give God the praise. Come on, give God a little praise. Y'all know the song? Want to make it clean inside? Won't he make you free? Won't he make you free? 
love the Lord? Anybody love the Lord? I just believe that this word was from the Lord. And I believe that if you're serious about giving him praise, that the Lord will come down your pew. That the Lord will come down your aisle. That the Lord will touch you today. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, just lift him up just a little bit. Yeah, lift him up just a little bit. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Just a little bit of praise, just a little bit of praise. Hallelujah. the Lord, y'all pray for me that the Lord will help me to sing and give me a singing voice and I'll sing for y'all a little bit. <laughs> At this time, there may be some in the house that don't know the Lord and the pardon of your sin. Everything that we've done thus far is to get you to this place to understand that God is in this house.